Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. <laughs> The sponsors of this program offer no endorsement of the opinions, philosophies, stubbornness, or confusion of the persons represented therein. However, with the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting by transcription one of the most distinguished couples in the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin as Liz and Ben Marriott in the new dramatic series, The Marriage. Emily was a baby. I remember how she learned to hold on to things months before she learned to let them go. I suppose it's the same with parents. You put so much of yourself into your children that it's almost too hard to just back away as they grow up. But of course you have to. That's the way we've tried to raise the children. We've tried to be intelligent and, and follow whatever theory seemed sensible at the time, always adding a little prayer that Pete or Emily might live through whatever crisis turned up. The other evening, we were all sprawled out in the living room after dinner. Uh, Daddy. Yeah? Don't you think the light is better for reading in your bedroom or, or the kitchen? No. Oh. Mommy, aren't you going to do the dishes now? Oh, I thought I'd just sit a minute. But you can't. Hmm? Huh? Well, there's somebody coming. Who? A boy. It's Alan Mercedes. He's taking me to the senior formal dance. Formal? Well, why didn't you tell me, dear? I didn't really know until this afternoon. Usually only junior or senior girls go. Yeah, there's an exception in your case? Mm -mm. He just asked me, that's all. He's a senior. Oh. He's coming tonight to ask me to go with him. I thought he'd asked you already. Oh, no, he just told me he was going to ask me. Oh, I see. I've got to talk to him. I mean, I've... I've got to talk to him alone. You don't mind going in the kitchen, do you? Well, of course not, dear. No, no. When he comes, we'll disappear. Hey, Mom. She's got a new sweater on. I know, Pete. Hey. She's got it buttoned up the back. What's she wearing it buttoned up the back for? Mommy, make him stop. And stockings. Mom, is she allowed to wear stockings on weekdays? Why, you little monster! Anyway, the seams aren't straight. You shut up! Look, Schmo. Peter, Peter, I think your sister has a point. Mommy, if he says something, if he so much as opens his mouth, I'll... I'll... You and what army? I don't need any help to handle you. I could take you on with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Mother, would you please handle this situation? I think I'd better answer the door. What happened to her? Never mind, Pick. You pick up your gear and go into your room. Oh. Liz. What? Well, why does she have her sweater buttoned up the back? Because, darling, she's 15 years old. Alan Mercedes was a young man in charcoal gray flannels with a tasteful tattersall vest. Ben and I were a little subdued. Up to this point, boys calling on Emily ran to dungarees and red and yellow jackets labeled Monarchs A.C. Mr. Mercedes appeared to be one of those suave young specimens who pose against ivy-colored walls in the Times magazine section. He lit a cigarette and handled his lighter like an old pro. I noticed he stood about a head taller than Ben. Ben must have noticed it, too, because he kept standing on his toes. Oh, well, it is nice meeting you, sir. Thank you, Alan. And uh, Mrs. Marriott. It's easy to see why Emily is such a pretty girl. Well, thank you, Alan. Oh, this is such a pleasant room. Isn't that table a gems for some original? Uh, almost. Mm. Has very fine lines. Mother. Yes, yes. If, uh, if you'll excuse us, Alan. Oh, of course. Uh, Mrs. Marriott, will I see you before I leave? Huh? Uh, I suppose so. Then I can make my devoirs later. Uh, come on, Ben. I hope you don't mind, Alan. I didn't change. I thought you'd understand. Oh, of course I do. I suppose I should start the dishes. Devoirs. Devoirs. It's French, darling. I know. Liz, what do you think of him? Well, he's mature. Mm-hmm. Poised. Yes, yes, he is that. Charming. Definitely. 
self-assured. I don't trust him. Ben. What's he got to be so self-assured about? Sit down, Ben. You want some more coffee? It's still hot. That is a high school senior? That's what they said. I've seen less mature young men practicing before the state Supreme Court. Sugar and cream? I'll take it black. Are you worried? He reminds me of a fellow I knew who was expelled from Princeton. What for? I'd rather not say. That's what reminded me of him. Ben, you're absolutely victorious. Sending a 15-year-old girl out with a man like that is like sending a little lamb out with a ravening tiger. <coughs> Seriously, Liz. Em hasn't been out on a date like this before. I, I, can she handle it? I, I mean, is she ready to understand? Uh, I, I mean, does she know... Well, does she? We've always answered all our questions honestly. Ben, 15-year-olds today know things we learned just last year. You know, if it were one of those gangly louts and sneakers that usually hang out here, I wouldn't mind. She'd at least have an even chance. But this one looks as though he'd been out with every chorus girl at the Copa. Oh, Ben, be sensible. You know we couldn't interfere with Emily's dates. We've no. just got to trust her. Oh, I do. I trust her all right. I trust her. I don't trust him. <laughs> what was that? the front door. My, he left without making his devoirs. <laughs> Come on. Emily? She's in her room. Where's Alan? He left. Pop, he said he wasn't taking him. He what? I left my door open to listen. He told Emily some girl, Gloria something, was speaking to him again. So he had to take her. Oh, Ben. If I get my hands on that boy, I'll Pete, break every... Pete, go to your room, will you, dear? Okay, Mom. Call me if you need me. No. Now, Ben. Ben, get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of myself, nothing. I, th I, I think he's behaved like a real stinker. I could wring his neck. I know, it... darling, I know, but that wouldn't help Emily. Poor kid. Oh, I've... she'll be heartbroken. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, Daddy. Yes, dear? Can I use your typewriter for my homework? Oh, of course. Thanks. I I'll be awful careful. Oh, we won't have to worry about the formal dress. We won't? No, I'm not going to the dance. There was something that, well, came up. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? Well, the dress would have been awfully expensive anyway. Oh, Alan... Alan said to say goodnight. He felt badly about not seeing you before I left. He's very polite that way. He is, eh? Well, ben, I know some... Ben. Well, that's sad, isn't it? Can I come in now? It's all right, Pete. Emily, I was kind of supposed to go with Freddie Hoffmeyer Saturday afternoon. To the rodeo. Oh. I saved up, but I don't really want to go much. I mean, I saw it two years ago. Emily, would you like to take my ticket? Pete, I... Go ahead, Em. I want you to go. Really. It's a very good seat. <laughs> oh. Mom, I didn't mean to make Emily cry. I know, dear, I know. It was very sweet and thoughtful of you. I'm sure Emily thinks so, too, only... Well, I, I guess she's... Yeah, the louse. Pete. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ben... Couldn't we get Emily something? She does need an evening gown anyway. I could die for her, really. Her first form. Now, don't you that start it. That boy. If I could get my hands on him, Pete was right. He is a louse. A pall hung over the Marriott household that evening. The atmosphere was a little like the last act of Cyrano. Bittersweet and bravely tragic. Quite seriously, I was worried about Emily. I was afraid that if she brooded on her failure, she might be a long time coming out of it. And this year, that the 16th year of a girl's life, is too sweet and exciting a time to be buried in gloom and defeat. I made up my mind to have a talk with her that afternoon. Did you want something, Mom? Emily, about that dance, dear. Oh, the dance. It seems awfully important to you now, but there will be others. I don't care about the others, Mom. This is the important one. I've just been thinking about it all day. Emily, you, you must... Mom, I've got to decide what I'm going to wear. Where? Well, of course. 
You're going? Well, naturally. Bobby Logan asked me this morning. He's a senior. A little more trustworthy than the last one, I hope. Oh, sure. I don't have to worry this time. The girl he was going with before got married to a boy in the Navy. Well, that sounds pretty secure. Well, I, I, I have to collect myself. Well, you'll need a new dress. Shoes. Well, you can use my black evening bag and the wrap. Are you sure that girl is married? <gasps> yes, she sent us a postcard from Atlantic City. Hmm. I'd feel a little better if it were Niagara. Hello. In here, Ben. Emily, depending on the dress, would you like to borrow that lace half slip of mine? The one from Paris? Uh-huh. Oh, Mommy. Hello, Emily, dear. You know, about that dance, I imagine it seems awfully important to you now, but there'll be other ones. Ben, you... for heaven's sake, where have you been? At the office. I stopped for a you minute on the You can heat up that leftover roast beef for you and Pete, and there's some salad all cut up. Would you like beer? Yes, I like beer. Liz, will you Not now, dear, not now. The stores are open late tonight, and Emily and I have a lot of shopping to do. She's going to the dance. She's going? But I don't think I approve of oh, that, boy. Oh, it isn't I... him. It's another one. Another one? His girl married a sailor. We really haven't time to go into the details. Oh, and Ben. What? Wash the dishes. <laughs> We took the bus to Hunt Fifth Avenue. I used to work there as a buyer. And a sudden wave of nostalgia swept over me as we sank ankle deep in the carpets of the Junior Miss Department. I'd made up my mind that Emily could pick out her own dress. I had the memory engraved on my mind of going with Mother to Jordan Marsh and writhing in agony while she picked out my first evening gown. An apoplectic red velvet that Mother said would wear like iron. To my horror, it did and it hung around my neck through college like the ancient mariner's albatross. This, I determined, would not happen to Emily. The first try-on had a hoop skirt. It's the latest, delicately fitted at the waist with cascades of shimmering color billowing out over cleverly concealed hoops. Mom, what happens if I want to sit down? Try it, dear. Whoops. <laughs> We'd better pass up the hoop skirt. This is an entirely new silhouette. Narrow, delightfully clinging, a simple yet classic sheen. A note the provocative slip up the side. It looks a little like the Shanghai gesture. I don't think I could sit down in this one either. <laughs> don't try, dear. He'll never get it together again. <laughs> Of course, the shining glory of the bare shoulder and the strapless gown. Clever boning and darling little tucks provide interest at the décolletage. It looks all right, doesn't it, Mommy? It does. I wouldn't have thought it. There's only one thing wrong. If I wear this by the end of the evening, I'll be a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and then we found it. At least I found it. Simple. Just a little daring, but perfect. And I sat there with my fingers crossed while Emily made up her mind. Well, it's between the white and the yellow. Oh, I wouldn't say exactly yellow, Emily. It's sort of a, a sunny straw, a, a golden apricot. A... <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's face it, Mommy, it is yellow. Which do you like? It's up to you, dear. But which one do you like best? Oh, I think they're both lovely. But, uh... But don't you think the white one is a little, uh, high? I don't think I've ever seen a turtleneck evening gown. <laughs> it's all right, Mommy. I like the yellow one better, too. <laughs> we whirled through the store collecting accessories. And then we stopped at a restaurant on the way home and, and felt very close and clubby over cottage cheese, salad, and tea. Saturday night seemed a long time coming, but finally Emily was in her room dressing, and the family settled down to await the coming of the gentleman caller. What's the name of this one, Liz? Logan. Bobby Logan. And he's a senior, too? Now, Ben, don't worry. Mom? Yes, dear? Can I borrow some of your perfume? All right. The little square bottle. It's 
called compromise. Mm-hmm. It's not compulsory. Do they take taxis? This one drives. I understand he's got a convertible. At any rate, there's no top. I assumed it was a convertible. Liz, do you think there's been a sort of change in the standards of adolescence since the automobile? Boys had automobiles when I was dating, darling. Not New York boys. And there wasn't much that could happen when you took a date home on the Broadway trolley. Unless you had to transfer. Now, Ben, these girls haven't had a sheltered life, really. They've changed. So have the boys. Liz, I don't think that Emily would know how to handle an enthusiastic Cub Scout. Oh. Mommy, I'm ready. Shall I come out? I understand it's a surefire theatrical trick to keep a girl dressed in unpressed trousers and a baggy shirt for two acts and then reveal her in the third in a lovely feminine gown. Well, I can believe it. Emily... Our little, barely post-adolescent Emily swept into the room, her bouffant skirt swirling around her, her hair shining and her eyes sparkling. There was an uncomfortable silence, and finally Peter said just the right thing. Hey, Emily, you're beautiful. Emily retired to her room, where presumably she hung herself up in the closet to avoid creasing. I could see Ben was getting apprehensive. He nearly jumped a foot when the doorbell rang. I'll get it. Oh, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. It must be stuck. Oh, it does that. Here, I'll get it. Well, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to disturb you. That's all right. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, oh, I was, uh, uh... I was looking for Marriott. Well, this is it. Oh, oh, well, uh, well, I guess I better come in then. Yeah. I'm Mister Marriott. Oh, how do you do, sir? I didn't catch your name. Oh, I, um, I'm sorry. I I don't speak very distinctly. I'm supposed to take speech improvement. No, oh, that's too bad. But uh, I don't think you gave me your name. Oh, oh, uh. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Bobby. Uh, Bobby Logan. Emily will be ready in a minute. Uh, this is Mrs. Marriott, Bobby Logan. Oh, how do you do, ma'am? <laughs> nice to see you, Bobby. <clears throat> Smoke? Oh, no. No, I play basketball. Oh. Uh, how tall are you, Bobby? Six, two. But I'm still growing. Goodness. I lop over my bed. You do? <laughs> that must be a problem. Oh, no, sir. I sleep sort of diagonal. Oh, the best way. You know, I, I, I really ought to apologize. I mean, asking Em at the last minute like this. Oh, no. I, I really wanted to go with her all the time, but Alan Mercedes said he was, and I didn't think it was worth my asking. I, I mean, I, uh, I, I don't mean it wasn't worth it, but, but I didn't think I had a... Well, if you knew Alan, you'd know what I mean. Yeah, we've met Alan. Hello, Bobby. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Bobby? Uh... Oh, hello, Emily. I bought you flowers, but they were behind the chocolate pudding in the icebox, and I forgot them. Oh, that's all right. We'll get some on the way. Well, good night. Have a good time. Oh, yes, sir. Good night. Good night, Mommy. Good night. Good night, Daddy. One o'clock, Emily. Okay, Dad. Well, good night. I, I, I'm awfully sorry about the flowers, Emily. Oh, that's all right. Bobby. What? You're standing on my dress. Oh. Emily swept out of the door in a cloud of taffeta and compromise. And I know it must sound, well, sort of squashy. But I couldn't help remembering her all wrinkled and bawling in the bassinet at New York Hospital. Or toddling off to nursery school in corduroy overalls. I had a frightening sense of hurtling downhill in a roller coaster. And I guess I, I felt I had to apply the brakes. I'm usually an occasional sherry after dinner drinker. But this was a crisis. What are you doing, Liz? Fixing a little something. Would you like anything? Whatever you're having. Say, what's the occasion? Oh, Nothing. 
To modern youth. Self-assured, poised, and sensible. Is that a toast or a prayer? Oh, for goodness sake, Ben. I went out to a formal dance when I was 15. The boys carried pocket flats. In Boston? I'm not quite sure what I was trying to prove. But I took three quick drinks and floated off. I kept telling Ben how mature I'd been at 15. Sounds as though you'd lived on Tobacco Road. I'm just trying to show you there was nothing to worry about. That's pretty far back for you to remember. Far back? Far back? Why, it was only yesterday. Only yesterday. And all our yesterdays are turned to dust. Oh, Ben. Well, a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. You're not pouring wave. another one. Oh, no, it's the same one. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Then they played that at my first formal dance. Oh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful song. All I remember from that era is, brother, can you spare a dime? Come on, Ben. Well, are we going somewhere? Come on, let's dance. Dance? Why not? I was very lovely at my first dance. Oh, I was very lovely. And I was kissed behind a potted palm. Palm isn't the only thing that's potted. Come on, Ben. We're having a heat wave. We certainly (laughs) are. But I was in complete control of the situation. I assure you, even though I was but 15, I was in complete control of the situation. And don't think there wasn't a situation. Oh, I don't. And the girls today... Are you listening? Intently. The girls today, if they'd been there then, would be just as... as uh, competent. Because today is is just like yesterday. Mm Mm-hmm. Do I make myself clear? You've made yourself transparent. Oh, isn't that nice? I look just like Emily... Well, of course, she's, she's prettier. And I was the master of the situation. Uh, should that be mistress? Well, it depends on the situation. Oh, it was a lovely situation. Ben, what time is it? Are you all right now? Cold soap. Ben, it's 1.30. I know. You asked Emily to be in at 1. I know. Ben, Ben, at 12 minutes of 2... No, no, a quarter of. I'm going to call the hospital. We would have heard if there'd been an accident. They were driving. That Joe Ganglefoot she's with probably drives like a drunk. Drunk? Ben, you don't think... She's only half an hour late. So far. Half an hour. Half an hour. Ben, anything can happen in half Liz, an hour. Liz, don't. Why didn't you tell her she had to be in by We've one? never behaved that way. We, we've tried to teach the children respect for limits. You should have uh, laid down the law. Now, I don't feel like a law layer down. Well, you've got to. It's a father's responsibility. It's about time you exercised authority. When she comes home, you've got to talk to her. Really talk to her. Yes, well, I suppose so. Well, there's no question about it. You've got to be firm. I'm going to call the police. Now, Liz, don't be hysterical. I'm not being hysterical. It's a sensible thing to do. I'm perfectly calm. Well, well, what do I do? Say uh, say I want a policeman? I think you better dial first. Oh, well, I'll dial O. Wait a minute. What is it? I think they drove up in front of the house. Are you sure? Come here. Here. Look out the window. Well, where are they? Still in the car. What's happening? Either she's dropped her gloves on the floor or... Or what? I think he kissed her. What's happening now? Encore. Oh, I can't see. Then you're in the way. Don't, don't. Don't let them see you. I won't. Well, thank goodness. Here she comes. Yeah. Now, Ben, you remember. All right, all right, all right. Emily? Are you still up, Mom? Ben. <clears throat> Emily? I hope you had a good time. Uh, you know, we've been just a little worried. 
Almost two o'clock. Your mother was very concerned. Yes, Dad. Now, look, Emily, don't you think you could be a little more considerate? <laughs> Try... Hey, what did I say? Can't you see something's wrong? Well, maybe I'd better... You stay right there. Well, don't you want me to go... Emily? Oh, there now, darling. It's all right. It's all right. Mom! Mom! Do you want to tell me about it, dear? I had a good time. Really, I did. I had a wonderful time. But of course, dear. It's all right now. I was all tight inside. Mommy, I didn't know how to feel. Well, what happened, dear? like Bobby, really. But I couldn't think what to say to him. All the girls seemed so smart. I tried. I was very clever. I said some very funny things. I know, dear. He's such a shy boy. At least I thought he was. I had it all made up in my mind to let him kiss me. I didn't know if I wanted him to, but I was afraid to stop him. He was, he was so serious. I just wanted to roll up into a ball. I, I was so ashamed. He kissed you, dear? Six times. He just went on and on. And I was so scared. Was that, that's what it was? I shouldn't have been scared. I shouldn't have been. You can't help that, darling. I didn't know what to do. You know, Emily, you were very beautiful in your evening gown. I was? It's hard to blame Bobby for wanting to kiss you. Mom, the first time I closed my eyes. I always do. You do? I'm not surprised that he wanted to keep on kissing you. Darling, a man does that when he's fond of a woman. A woman? Well, more or less. Then it's, it's all right, Mommy. Emily, darling. I think you did very well. I did? Uh-huh. Is Daddy mad at me for being so late? That's all right, dear. Just leave it to me. We women have to help each other, don't we? You go on. Get ready for bed. It's late. Mommy? Hmm? I think being a woman's awful nice. Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of The Marriage, written by Ernest Canoy. Denise Alexander plays Emily, David Pfeffer, Pete, Jack Grimes was heard as Alan, and William Redfield as Bobby Logan. The Marriage is an NBC Radio Network production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. Is Emily all right now? She's fine. What was she crying about? Because she's discovered something wonderful. What's that? <laughs> Never mind, darling. I don't think you could understand. Oh. I suppose not. Well, good night. Good night, darling. Listen to the Hollywood story next on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>